from her appearance at the Met Gala to her front cover photo in a magazine that didn't even exist, most of Lily Jean's entire career as a triumphant public figure turned out to be nothing more than one massive lie. It eventually went way deeper than just the photos themselves. Her professional Instagram page, which often displayed what seemed to be very authentic brand deals, boasted the verification badge as well as a follow account of over 1 million. However, this 1 million follow account would also be where her ruthless expose began after users on Reddit would notice that despite her high follow account, she'd receive very few likes on each photo, leading to initial suspicions that she might have purchased some of her followers. The unassuming thread, which was titled A Discussion of Lily Jean, began by stating that her engagement is a little more than suspicious, before going on to explain that she averages anywhere from 100 to 1,000 likes per post, implying that almost all of her 1 million followers were completely inactive. The website flanks.com, which stores Instagram engagement data, states that on average, accounts with more than 1 million followers have an engagement rate of 1.97%, meaning that an account with 1 million followers should be receiving approximately 19,700 likes per post, highlighting Lily Jean's maximum of 1,000 likes per post as suspicious. Over on Twitter, her engagement appeared even more dubious. As discussed in one comment reading, I just looked at her Twitter and she has 11.1k followers, but the only person that likes her posts is her mum. Wow, this thing got wild. To be fair, this comment did include a bit of misinformation, as in reality, Lily Jean would sometimes receive up to two likes per text post and a whopping five likes if she posted a nice photo of herself. Obviously, we're taking the piss a little bit here. However, with over 11,000 followers, the inability to receive more than 10 likes on a post, and the fact that her Twitter account would eventually get banned for violating the Twitter rules, sets a pretty good baseline for how suspicious Lily Jean's activity was in the beginning. This was hammered home further in another Reddit comment relating to her Instagram, which read, 1.1 million followers and less than 70 likes in five hours is pretty telling, as well as another screenshot posted to Twitter of a website which had estimated that over 90% of Lily Jean's followers were fake. However, 90% could have still been a conservative estimate. Assuming her Facebook following of 27,000 and her YouTube following of 24,000 are both legitimate, it's hard to imagine that her real Instagram following is much higher than 30, 40, or 50,000, which makes what we're about to discuss next even stranger. Because after this original Reddit expose would blow up in popularity, Lily Jean's likes per Instagram post randomly shot up to between 20,000 and 35,000 likes per post. Occasionally, this number would reach even higher to around 50,000 likes, leading many to believe that she was now also paying to increase her engagement in addition to purchasing followers. Her comments began to flood with hundreds of other verified Instagram accounts, all leaving extremely basic positive comments, each of which almost always receiving less than 10 likes per comment, despite the photo itself receiving up to 50,000. If you want a good laugh, look at her IG comments. She has thousands of comments that say amazing or hello or awesome from these foreign accounts with high sub counts. It's insane IG lets her get away with it, and they're all verified for some reason. Compare this with another relevant female content creator like Valkyrie, whose top comments from other verified creators receive hundreds if not thousands of likes, and suddenly it becomes obvious that Lily Jean's comment section also smells a little bit fishy. The most interesting part about Lily Jean's statistics is that purchasing as many followers and likes as she had is costly, like really costly. Isn't buying that many followers pretty expensive? Two websites listed 2,000 plus USD for that. That is insane. With a quick Google search, you can find multiple websites that sell Instagram followers, claiming to make you an instant niche influencer, increase your sales and profit, make you a celebrity instantly, and give you excellent PR, all for the price of $8 USD per thousand followers, equivalent to 8,000 USD in exchange for a following of 1 million. However, it gets even pricier when you start to look at how much it costs to buy likes, which sell at a rate of $150 per 25,000. When considering Lily Jean's average of 35,000 likes per post, you begin to get an idea as to how much she had to have been shilling out in order to maintain her image as an influencer. Well, that's assuming she was paying for it. Another Reddit comment indicated that this might not have been the case. I remember a while ago reading an article on how to increase your following on Instagram, and one of the recommendations was to create multiple fan accounts of yourself. They recommended like an automated program or something. They can run different accounts to make it easier. The details are a blur, but it's along those lines. I was like, nah, so I wouldn't be surprised if at least the majority of these are run by her. Under the suspicion that Lily Jean had somehow managed to create hundreds of thousands of accounts personally, people began to look into those who followed her as as well as those who had commented on her posts. They'd run into accounts such as this one called at Howeef, which had commented marry me, yet had no profile picture, no posts, no followers, and only one account following, Lily Jean. This was basic evidence showing that either Lily Jean had some bizarre super fans that had created accounts specifically to follow her and her only, or alternatively, something or someone was creating these accounts with the sole goal of boosting Lily Jean's follow account and engagement. However, accounts like Howeef were only the absolute tip of what would become a colossal sized iceberg as those who were suspicious continued to dig further, finding some of the strangest, most unexplainable accounts. For example, there was this one called Shaniqua4798, which was apparently run by an African-American lady, 
in posts such as this one, which read, I love this photo, I am so badass. Yet, for some reason, over half her profile was just photos of Lily Jean, as if it was some kind of fan page. What was even more bizarre was that in some of the posts, there were full-blown stories of Shanique's incredible experience meeting Lily Jean, typed in an African-American accent with the N-word and all. Girl says, oh, hello, my name is Lily Jean, and I'm an up-and-coming model, motivational speaker, actress, beauty blogs, etc. You get my drifts right, y'all. Her name is hashtag Lily Jean, and she does hashtag MUA work too. But she really is also everything. So impressed on how sweet and little she was. Her makeup was friggin' flawless. She asked her who did her makeup, and the little bitty says, oh, I always do my own, and minimal is better. The story in its over-complementary nature was almost like it had been written by Lily Jean herself, which, depending on how you view the world, could be seen as offensive considering the N-word was used in the beginning of the writing. Offensive or not, it was certainly strange. As with the dozens of other Lily Jane fan pages, which when investigating further, were also filled with fake followers, showing that maybe Lily Jane had some kind of program or script to create multiple accounts, which would then follow her whilst reposting her images to their pages. The initial Reddit expose read, a quick glance at her comment sections yields several accounts that comment consistently, a majority of which are fan accounts, of which there are at least 20 with variations of at Lily Jane fan page slash fan in their handle or bio. While having fan pages in itself is not unusual, this accusation of these self-run slash owned accounts comes from the fact that these accounts mostly repost her content and often have a post with highly detailed backstory on how they met slash found her on social media. Each of the accounts listed tag 100% of their posts with the hashtag Lily Jean, regardless of relevance. Most slash all of the accounts follow each other. These accounts would also reveal that Lily Jean might have been running some kind of reply bot or script on her own account. As to the previously mentioned comment stating marry me, Lily Jean would reply with a love heart once before returning two weeks later to reply with yet another love heart. This was the same case with almost every other comment on this photo. Lily Jean replies with two love hearts anywhere from zero days to two weeks apart, as if the replies were automated or on some kind of unspecified schedule, providing further evidence that Lily Jean had experience with setting up systems to assist with the engagement on her Instagram account. As a result of this apparent engagement, Lily would find herself with a multitude of different brand deals on her platform, the quantity of which listed in the original Reddit post. However, with all the other fake information that had been uncovered, people were unsurprisingly skeptical about how legit these brand deals really were. It's very possible that those companies aren't actually sponsoring her. Anyone can just write hashtag add in their caption and tag the company. The main problem here was that it's kind of hard to expose a fake brand deal. As the comment mentioned, anyone can buy whatever they want, post themselves using it on Instagram, chuck in hashtag ad and suddenly they're a paid influencer. It's not like any brand is going to speak up and do anything about it, because why would they want to get in the way of someone promoting their product on Instagram for free? Well, this would be the case for most, except for one brand, Bite Beauty. Lily Jean would post a vlog of her heading to the Bite Beauty store in New York City, during which she would not only be greeted by a bunch of fans to get photos, but to also create her own sponsored lipstick shade titled Lily. The collaboration would be announced on her personal Instagram in a post reading, pretty sure this warm red I made at Bite Beauty is off the hook. You hashtag genies can purchase this shade in P plus L by calling in or dropping by stores. Just ask for the Lily. However, those who had been to Bite Beauty before knew that it was a store where anyone could go and combine colors together to make their own lipstick. In the video, she said she got the opportunity to create her own lipstick at the Bite Beauty lab, which I'm pretty sure anyone can do if you go to the Bite Lab in New York. Like Safia Nygaard did it too and did a video on it just like LJ here did. Yup, all you do is book an appointment online and pay 65 bucks. Anybody can do it. According to this Reddit comment and this Reddit comment, which to be fair are both pretty poor evidence, the brand would then reach out to Lily Jean, telling her that she needed to stop lying about their collaboration. However, Lily Jean wasn't only limited to lying about brand deals. Some of the photos she posted were also lies created in Photoshop. We mentioned in the very beginning that Lily Jean had apparently attended the Met Gala as seen in this photo before users would realize that it was simply her face photoshopped over Katy Perry's. Another photo which would surface in 2019 display Lily Jean's face on the front of a Teen Vogue magazine, yet Teen Vogue had been discontinued two years earlier in 2017. Finally, Reddit would find a photo of Lily Jean's face being displayed in Times Square, with many assuming that this was also done in Photoshop. It would be revealed that this was actually a real image, but only because Lily had been chosen by the CoverGirl brand to have her face put up there, as their marketing campaign required images of real people. How ironic. As the evidence continued to mount against Lily Jean, it got to the point where she could no longer ignore it. Yet, instead of coming clean, admitting her mistakes, and starting fresh, she'd arrogantly claim that she was in the right and that she was simply the victim of cyberbullying. She'd post images such as this one with a caption reading, and there it is, cyberbullying is a real thing. I hope the people out there reading this who might be that bully or are being cyberbullied know it's not okay. In addition to playing the victim, Lily Jean would be confronted about buying her followers, to which she had no response or rebuttal, and would simply state that she was once again being 
being bullied. She'd also attempt to debunk the Photoshop Met Gala and Teen Vogue images, stating that a fan had created them and they liked them so much that they decided to repost them, yet whoever happened to be involved in this message exchange pressed further by stating that Lily Jean hadn't suggested once that it was fan art or that there was anything indicating that it wasn't supposed to be real. Another defense that Lily used against those critical of her was coming out as pansexual, then instantly using that point as leverage to call each of her haters homophobic. Unsurprisingly, none of these methods did absolutely anything to suppress the criticism, so Lily Jean then took on a different approach to dealing with the haters. Copyright striking literally anything and everything that said anything negative about Lily Jean. Almost every single Reddit thread covered in this video displays this message at the top reading, sorry, this post was removed by Reddit's legal operations team. This content was removed in response to a copyright claim by a third party. Similarly on Instagram, images such as this one posted in the last few days displayed that over three years after the expose, Lily Jean or her mother are still copyright striking anything with a negative sentiment towards their quote unquote brand. On YouTube, it's the same story. Lily Jane lately has been falsely striking YouTube channels. As we all know, she striked me. You know, the thing that stings most about this is because I was genuinely trying to be helpful in giving art tips and like constructive criticism in that video. Let me talk about how Lily Jane, her mother, Laura Truman, tried to dox me and failed. All you have to do is type in Lily Jane copyright to reveal how many people she's done this to. Some even went so far as to write about their experience getting DMCA'd by Lily Jean. The video you see above was DMCA'd two days after it was uploaded, having only 580 views at the time. A lot for me since my channel is modest in size, but nowhere near viral. The offending comment, a heavily edited photo of Lily that I used for the thumbnail. That's it. To be abundantly clear, what they're doing is illegal. Lying in a DMCA claim is considered perjury, which is a felony in New York State where they reside. To the multiple accusations of abusing the copyright system, Lily Jean would respond by stating, you have repeatedly done every thing to bring me down. You and the rest of the cyber bullies in your group for 18 months and I've quite frankly had enough. There is a difference between fair use and copyright. You people seem to think that you can take me down and write and say whatever you want using my content and face, defaming me along the way and that is simply not what will happen. For once in your life, tell the truth. The saddest part about the whole thing is that they probably think they're actually on the right path by taking this approach. That if they just do this for long enough, the criticism will eventually go away. Yet while Lily and her mother are clearly extremely hard hard workers, the negative impact is actually a result of Lily Jean's deep-seated yet glaringly obvious complete lack of anything that feels real or admirable. It's all fake and that's why none of her videos ever feel comfortable to watch just because you know she's putting on that act so hard. Taking down anything that's critical of Lily Jean fixes the symptom but not the main problem. As if they're taking painkillers every single day for a broken knee that in reality is screaming out for a complete reconstruction. Now I could be wrong, maybe copyright strike and suppressing anything negative about Lily Jean is the correct move going forward, but there's one thing they need to realize. People will not stop discussing this topic until they learn to ignore the criticism. Everyone can feel as though they haven't moved on, and it's therefore still a relevant topic. Social media success is actually made substantially easier through criticism, but only if you take it into account and let it guide your prior mistakes as you move into the future, and unfortunately, you learn nothing when you bury your head in the sand and call anyone with anything to say a big bad bully.